Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, March 12th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And we got yet another great post by one of our undergraduate interns here from the sans.edu Bax program. Noah Pack took a look at what happens if you are exposing your AWS API keys. Now he did two experiments. The first one was just leaking the API key via a website. Secondly, he then leaked the API key via a public GitHub repository. In order to detect what happened to the API key, he did use Canary tokens. Canary tokens allow you to then receive an email whenever a particular API key is used. They have been quite popular. You can also attach them to PDFs or Word documents and the like. In this particular case, the first experiment where he leaked the API key via the website, via a configuration file on the site, it was used within about three days. Now, not really clear who used it. The attacker did use a Proton VPN, a VPN provider, in order to obfuscate the actual source of the request. Secondly, when he published it on GitHub, uh, the key was used pretty much immediately. However, uh, there things were a little bit different. The number one requester was actually a researcher in an organization that proactively scans GitHub repositories for leak keys. GitGuardian was the requester here. Now, a little bit odd that actually uh, the emails coming in uh, whenever the key was accessed uh, were so excessive that it actually caused some email uh, issues uh, for Noah and he had to kind of uh, then discontinue the experiment. But needless to say, yes, we have already shown and we had another uh, blog post about this last week that if you do leak these configuration files, they're actively being looked for by attackers and they're not just collecting these API keys, they're also putting them uh, to work pretty soon after they receive them. If you do find exposed keys on your web server, in your GitHub repository, assume they have been compromised, change them quickly, and then, you know, whatever logs you can retrieve, try to figure out what an attacker may have done with those API keys. And then an interesting story that I missed before, it's uh, not as current as some of the stories that I usually cover, but it relates to the abuse of Calendly links. Calendly is a service that allows you to schedule meetings, and you'll often find how uh, users have as part of their email footer or uh, maybe as part of a LinkedIn profile, a link to Calendly that you can use to schedule a meeting uh, with them. Now, as someone schedules a meeting, they're able to enter a URL that then links to whatever uh, meeting software they are using, like some Zoom, Google, Microsoft uh, meeting link. Uh, but the actual location of the link is then obfuscated as a Calendly link to the Calendly user. So you're receiving the meeting request, you're adding it to your calendar. When you're clicking on the link, you click on the link that's only identified as a Calendly link, but then Calendly will redirect you to the link that the user, the attacker in this case, added to the uh, entry. And this can be malicious. Like in this particular example, it can be used to point to an Apple script file and then the victim will inadvertently execute that script instead of joining a meeting. So far, this appears to have been used uh, mostly in target attacks against uh, crypto executives. Uh, but of course, uh, this uh, could easily be used against other Calendly users, and even in some ways automated. Awareness should probably be your first line of defense, but double check that any scripts being downloaded and such cannot easily be executed by a user. 
Duane Michael from Spectre Ops wrote a blog post showing how to abuse the Microsoft Configuration Manager, well, which at one point used to be known as System Center Configuration Manager, SCCM. As he points out, this tool is quite old, uh, originally released in 1994, and as a result, may not be quite up to date on sort of the modern security paradigms. It has been abused in the past, but it is still showing some fairly common sort of misconfigurations that can be abused in particular as deployments often give it far-reaching privileges even on domain controllers. And that's sort of one of the highlights here of the articles that uh, the uh, configuration manager can be used to actually then run arbitrary code on a domain controller if it's configured correctly, incorrectly, depending on what side of the fence you're on. And they also introduced a GitHub repository uh, misconfiguration manager, as they call it, which lists various tradecraft that can be used uh, via SCCM or configuration manager. Interesting for anybody here on a red team, but also for the blue teamers, you're always good to know what mistakes to avoid. Well, that is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.